What do you mean by, what would my love for my partner motivate me to do for my partner? Right, so this is what I feel is supplementary question two. Mm -hmm. and, and the question is, if I really loved my partner, which is an interesting question in itself, mm. what would my love of my partner motivate me to do for them? So this is a very important question, of course, because if I don't love my partner, then of course the whole answer is, is moot point. Yeah. So, so we need to ask ourselves quite sincerely what love, if, if love existed within me, what it would motivate me to do in my relationship with my partner. Now, let's look at the three or four different side points to this, because there, there are three or four different side points to this. The first side point to this is, if my partner truly loved herself, and if I wanted my partner to truly love herself, I would never want my partner to betray herself in any way, spiritually, emotionally, sexually or physically. I wouldn't want her to do something against her feelings that I know her or that I know her feelings to be. Mm -hmm. I would and the only time that I would confront those particular feelings is if I knew that her feelings on the subject or his feelings on the subject were out of harmony with the way God loves. Mm. And but even then I would not expect my partner to betray herself That's or nice. himself yeah. with regard to those feelings. I would always be trying to support them. So I'd be acknowledging, darling, you have that, you have that feeling in you. Mm -hmm. You need to feel that feeling. If it's in harmony with love, you would suggest that. It's in harmony with what I feel love to be. If it's out of harmony with love, you could also suggest that. I feel it's out of harmony with what love is to be, but you still need to feel it. Because yeah. it's only by experiencing it, feeling it, that you're actually going to work through it anyway, that you're going to notice it and see its presence. Now, if I loved my partner in this way, I would never want my partner to do something that betrays herself, even if she doesn't think it's a betrayal of herself. Mm. So if I thought it would be a betrayal of myself, I wouldn't want her to do it just because she's willing to. Right? So this is a very important point to realise, is that I, knowing certain things, and I might know more about betrayal of myself than my partner does, mm -hmm. And therefore, I would never want my partner to betray, her, betray herself, even if it was to my benefit. Yeah. I wouldn't want that to happen. Benefit would be in quotations, yeah. of course. It can't really be. It's not really ever going to be in my benefit. Yeah. But, but um, I might see it as a benefit in the, in the moment. Mm -hmm. For example, I come home from work, right? And we can bring up other examples. Just a short example so people understand. I come home from work. I want the dinner on the table. I know my partner doesn't really want to cook my dinner. Mm -hmm. And I can feel that in her. Now, if I honoured this, I would not want her to cook my dinner, even if she said she wanted to. <laughs> You're basically saying I would never exploit my partner's willingness to betray themselves. Exactly. Yeah. Not only would you never exploit it, though, you would never encourage it and, in fact, you would discourage it. Yeah. You would actually say to your partner, I feel you're betraying yourself now. Mm -hmm. And that's no good because to betray yourself is the highest form of betrayal. Yeah. To betray yourself means that we are no longer in a relationship. I'm in a relationship with a facade. And, I, and you're really saying also, aren't you, that um, if I saw you betraying yourself with me, I would discourage it. But if I saw you betraying yourself with someone else, I would discourage it. Of course. Yeah. I would discover it where, discourage it whether it was with parents, with children, with people at work, with, you know, whatever people in society, society generally, mm -hmm. I would discourage it in every instance yes. because I would see it as a betrayal of yourself and I would never be able to encourage you to do so if I loved you. Mm -hmm. If I loved you, I would always support the fact that you should never betray yourself if I truly loved you. Yeah. So that's number one. Yeah. Number two is that I would never expect you to do something for me or if we, that, that I should be doing for myself. Is that number two? Yes. So, so I would never want my partner to do something for me that I could see I need to do for myself. In other words, that I could see as a part of me loving myself. Mm. 
So that means that I would never say to my partner things like, you should do this for me, when I know it's something that I have to do for myself. Yeah. You should have done this. You could have done this and you didn't. And you should love me. You know, all those kind of statements are all statements out of harmony with what I need to supply to myself if I truly take responsibility for myself. And I would never expect my partner to do something for me that I need to be doing for myself. And that's your love of... That's my love of you. Me. Yes. The feeling, or the say it's me, the feeling I have for you is that I don't want you to be doing things unnecessarily that I can do for myself. And actually, if I loved myself, I would be doing for myself. Exactly. It's not yeah. even unnecessarily. Take the word unnecessarily yeah, yeah, out. Yeah. Because... You have to do them for yourself yes. if you love yourself. Yes. That, that's what you would do. It's necessary for me, not you, <laughs> yeah, exactly. is what I mean. Yeah. So, so it's always unnecessary for the other person yes. to do something where you should be doing it for yourself. Yep. Right? Now, if they want to give you the gift of that and it mm -hmm. truly comes from their heart, well, that's different. You, know, you would allow your partner to do such a thing because mm -hmm. that is part of love. But you would not force them, expect them, coerce them, manipulate them, control them or ask them. <laughs> Mm. to do such things. You would always be thankful if they did, if they did it without betraying themselves. Yeah. Yep. So, so this is point number two that we need to address on this particular, do I love my partner? If I love my partner, I would never want my partner to do for me something that I need to do for myself or could do for myself. If my partner does do it, I would appreciate it and be thankful but I would never expect it or demand it. Yeah. And this is where you said you wouldn't manipulate, coerce, bully, whatever, or even, even ask. ask. And often, uh, you know, I've had people say to us, well, why don't you just ask us to do that? And that's really because we both value taking personal responsibility for yes. things that we can do for ourselves. Yes. Yeah. If somebody offers that's completely and different. we can feel the offer comes from their heart, yeah. then most of the time we will take up their offer. Yes but we will never ask them because it's our responsibility what we're doing. So if we're giving a seminar, for example, it is our responsibility to set up the seminar, organise the seminar, pay for the seminar, pay for all the bills of the seminar and so forth. That's our personal responsibility. If other people want to support us in those things, we don't ask them to, but we do allow them to yes. when they want to share in the process. And it's the same principle in a relationship. It's the same principle in a relationship, yeah. yes. Okay. So the third point in this session is, if I truly loved my partner, I would always be honouring the fact that my partner needs to take personal care of herself and personal responsibility for herself. Mm -hmm. And as a result, I would never encourage, I would never take responsibility for things that they need to be taking responsibility for, for themselves, unless it was something that I was willing to give to them and that I could feel they didn't expect from me. Yes. Yeah. So that's the two ifs. Yes. So firstly, a lot of times our partner expects certain things from us. So for example, if the car breaks down, you might expect that I'm the one that goes and gets it repaired. Yeah. Now under those circumstances, if I did that, then I would be supporting your addiction. And therefore not loving and me. And therefore not loving you. If, though, you had a feeling of you were willing to do it, but I also had a feeling that I'm willing to do it, then I'd be perfectly able to do it because I want to mm. and because I can feel that you're willing to take as much responsibility for our family vehicle as I am <laughs> and therefore loving yourself as much as I am. So you would always be encouraging your partner to love themselves. And if your partner truly loved herself, in, in my case, I'm referring to a female partner yes. here. If my partner truly loved myself, herself, she would never betray herself, mm -hmm. but she would always take personal responsibility for herself. Mm. And I would never encourage her to not take personal responsibility for herself, although there are times that I might gift, give her the gift of my taking responsibility for something that she could have taken responsibility for herself. Yeah. Now, so, so we need to understand the flavour of that, I suppose yes. you could say. Yes. So this is whenever we notice the demand coming out of our partner to, for us to take personal responsibility for them, mm -hmm. then we would not be able to agree with such demand. If love motivated us, the love would say, 
Actually, this is not loving you to help you avoid, avoid a fear. And avoid a personal responsibility, yeah. right? But if, they, if you knew they needed something and you could feel they were willing to take full personal respons responsibility for it themselves, mm -hmm. then giving the gift of your taking responsibility for it is a gift, uh, which, of course, your partner would probably be appreciative of. Yeah. Right? And that's fine to do that. But we would never do it when it's demanded. Mm -hmm. And I often see people breaking this one fairly, fr fairly often, you know, where, where the partner demands something, the other person knows they can do it better, so they go ahead and do it. And all the problem with that is the partner never learns to take pers yeah. personal responsibility. The partner also never learns to do the task. Yeah. So therefore, they never know how to do it. Yeah. And unfortunately, because of their projected demand, they never see what I'm giving them as a gift. Yeah. And it's quite damaging to the relationship under all circumstances. And often people do it for the sake of peace in the moment or expedience. It'll be quicker if I do it, whatever. I'll just do it. And it's actually kind of an insidious problem, isn't it, in it relationships? Is. That Which usually grows and has its own... Um, it creates its own monster in the relationship yes. almost. Yeah. Where in the end you have certain one half of the relationship having to, having to do certain things because the other half neither knows how to do it nor wants to. Yeah. Right? And this is a big problem in relationships where if we're not taking personal responsibility, we, we eventually require the other party to do all the things that we're unwilling to do. And that's not a loving thing at all. And the other party, of course, is not going to feel it as an unloving thing, mm -hmm. as a loving thing. And so they're going to complain sooner or later. And there's going to be frustration and anger build up in the partner as a result. And sooner or later, it's going to come to a head. It's going to come to a boiling point. And oftentimes it's the, result, uh, the result is the complete breakdown of a relationship because of yeah. these kind of demands that each party is putting on the other. So point number four with regard to this particular question of what I would do if I truly loved my partner is that I would never expect them to give to me things that I would be unwilling to give to myself. I would never expect them to do things for me that I am unwilling to do for myself. Right. So, so for example, if I'm unwilling to clean the toilet mm -hmm. <laughs> and I would never expect them to clean the toilet either. Yeah. Which would actually in the end mean that the toilet would end up a very filthy mess <laughs> <laughs> until I learnt <laughs> that I need to love myself and clean the toilet. Yeah. 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 But I would never demand that they do something that I'm unwilling to do for myself. Okay, that's an interesting one to discuss when we get to the examples. examples yes. Because it's similar, isn't it, to the second point that you raised, mm -hmm. which is I would want to do everything for myself that I need to do for myself to take responsibility. Yes. But you're making a distinction with this one, and that is that if I love my partner, I would never ask them to do anything that I'm unwilling to do. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's a point of ethics yeah. in the end. Yeah. It's a point of what is ethical for me to, to request of my partner if I'm loving my partner. Yeah. If I love my partner as I love myself, then what I would do is I would care for their um, feelings about things as much as I'd care for my own. Yeah. So if I'm unwilling to do something for myself, I certainly would never demand that they do it for me. Yeah. Because to do so would be very unethical. Yeah. And every time you have an unethical relationship, there is no love present. Mm. And whenever there's no love present, of course, you're going to either have a stagnant or degrading relationship because God's laws are always trying to correct issues of love and therefore always trying to correct our own, our own unethical behaviour in our relationship with our partner. Mm -hmm. So, so this is a, these points are very important points that we need to understand with regard to this single question, which is, if I truly loved my partner, what would this love motivate me to do for my partner? Yeah, mm. yeah, great.